We have uh, Kevin in studio. He's a financial expert. He's been here before. Always lovely to have you in the show. Thank you. Una chango <laughs> <laughs> So we try. know how to handle our money better. Yes. And today's conversation is probably something that most of us, if not everyone, um, that means if your journey comes in Asia before Ufike retirement, that we'll all get to retirement. That I will. I need to realize that I will not be doing this till Evie. Uh, well, Catherine mm -hmm. Casabulli is back. <laughs> so never say never. Mm -hmm. But um, w we will get to retire at some point, yeah. And we need to plan for that. Where do we even start? Well, wow, that's uh, very huge um, <laughs> in terms of tackling it. Yeah. Because um, we must be able to actually know that at some time T, we shall not be able to get the income that we get. That's true. And our bodies, I mean, they just feel at some point you become a bit uh, tired. Um, you can't have the same agility that you had when you were a bit young. So if you have that now, uh, you must be able to know at this particular t point in time, I should be getting this source of income because I also need to support myself at that particular age. Mm. The recommended um, age is actually 60 right now, okay. uh, but you can actually early retire at 50. So it's, I mean, you can do it at 50 or the one that is mandated by government is 60. 60. Yes. So before that, I mean, the income that you get, always put something into your pension. And that's where the um, pension act comes in, um, cap 189. So which means that you must be able to uh, put in this amount every single month of your income. And it's mandatory where the employers are supposed to submit. Uh, ordinarily, people do the 4%. Uh, then the employer matches at 4%, but you can do as much as you want. There are so many incentives that come with it. So it's good to always have that in mind. Um, mm -hmm. Even if you have a business and you're not employed, yeah. always put something aside, knowing that at time T, I'll not be able to function at the same rate. I'll not be able to probably to get the same income. And unfortunately, when we become older, our expenses become more. Yes. Because health-wise, I mean, you have to do one, two, three, uh, you have to also support yourself with a good healthy diet. Uh, I mean, your needs do not cease to exist at a particular time in age, so you must be able to consider that in mind. And I think um, the sooner you start, the better. It's not too, uh, too, late, too, late, too early to start. You can even start at uh, a very young age, at 20, knowing that you are saving towards uh, being able to redeem this w um, income, flow of income uh, at when you get old 50 or 60 mm. they are they are above yeah okay yeah so it, it looks like when you're in employment and maybe not all kinds of employment but yeah. you know a good employment looks like there's already a structure for that and you talked about the four percent from you and then your employer also matches up and that is put so that structure is already there so even when you're getting employed that you know will be taken from your money every single month for your pension what are the structures that are there for people who are now maybe self-employed or in business or maybe in employment that do not provide this particular service? Uh, that's a very good question because right now there is uh, an enabling by, by an enabled environment by law. There is an umbrella where you can actually do it. And as even if you're a one employer, you can be able to actually come in the, under this um, uh, umbrella that is uh, recognized by law that we're able to actually put your money into. So you cannot uh, probably uh, shy away from that because you have a business or you're self-employed. But again, it's a personal drive. You must be able to have that as well. Yes. Because I'm not compelling. We should not go by the laws because it's not an issue of the government compelling us. Yeah. It's about you thinking about yourself. Uh, what are your needs going to be? And not necessarily that the government has, has actually stated this amount. So the drive should be um, as much as you can that you can save to your pension. And there are so many pension schemes that are available. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's always uh, your choice. It's not mandatory that your employer actually does uh, choose for you. They can choose for you, but you can actually choose for yourself and say, no, I want my pension to go to this uh, X, uh, X trust. So that, that is also within your confines as an employee. Um, and again, I'm, I must mention that uh, it's unfortunate that we probably... Um, do not have that particular um, um, avenue where you are advised mm -hmm. uh, when you get to that term uh, of retirement because you get a, l a lump sum. Sometimes you've not even received such, a kind, of, uh, such kind of an amount in your entire, entire working, working life. life. Yeah. Yeah. And some people get this amount and they get confused. They spend it badly. 
And unfortunately, um, I've seen our friends to my uh, parents who have retired already. And unfortunately to say they have actually spent their retirement um, income very um, not so in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think there should be a mechanism, like in the Western world, there's a mechanism that actually the pension uh, funds, like uh, an SSF uh, replica, that usually now uh, goes and advise, uh, advises, like the people who are now about to get that particular pension, um, with what to do, what are you supposed to do with this income? Uh, how are you supposed to actually uh, probably invest or make something to generate uh, or spend wisely mm -hmm. so you just don't blow it out. Uh, TSC has tried uh, but in the Western world is very, very, um, uh, very robust. They, have, they are proactive. They engage the old people. They are make sure that they actually uh, give them actually advisors who can be able to uh, guide them on how to spend this uh, lump sum amount that they receive because again you must be very um, um, uh, um, uh, we must be very frugal with how you're going to spend. Okay. Uh, because of that age, again, like we said, you have so many things coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, health is not cheap, and um, you need to actually uh, just have that in mind. Okay. Yeah. And is it is it okay to look at how you'd like your retirement to be? The people who'd be like, I want to go back to the farm when I retire. There are ones who I'd like to have built some place in Uko, Leafy Suburbs. Mm -hmm. Knowing what it is that you want for your retirement in advance, hoping that it actually you know yeah. comes to fruition yeah. and start working towards that say for example if it's a home that you want to build that it is not wise for you to start immediately you've retired not start building for you to start working towards that dream early uh yes again the issue of planning is is quite uh, important yeah. when you're uh, supposed to um think uh, futuristic because human beings that's how we survive yes so what you do you have to uh, say i want to have this kind of uh, environment that i want to live mm -hmm. it could be you want to probably stay in a leafy suburb probably in karen in one big mansion i mean just plan it now know how much it costs because again you can't plan something up in the air without knowing exactly mm -hmm. how much it costs mm -hmm. so if you know you're going to probably invest in a house yeah and it's not good to build when you are retiring because again i mean those are misplaced um, um encounters that you should have <laughs> done some time ago yeah uh unfortunately for some it happens at that particular point because of one or two things beyond your control but it's good to have um, a good house before you retire you have a constant source of income, be it a business, something that will give you, um, or even, j I, I like the way some people do it. They go and put a farmhouse. I mean, you just stay, they stay there, you keep your mind busy, you tend your, uh, for your animals and livestock. I mean, th th that's also the activity in itself keeps you uh, uh, longer. I mean, you don't that's age so as true. fast. So you must be able to look at uh, what are you going to actively participate in and not just necessarily go and sit in a, in a balcony, I mean, just uh, basking in the sun. But maybe we need to talk about how you're used to earning every single month, you know, Kevin, mm. because you're working for it or maybe you're employed and you know it's going to come. Yeah. And this stops at a certain point when you retire. Maybe it won't be as much as it used to depending mm. on what uh, arrangement you have yeah. um, but the importance of creating something that will be giving you an income apart from just depending on the amount of money that you put in somewhere yeah uh, they th th that that is also very good uh, to know and understand yeah. Especially yeah. with these economic times, yeah. uh, I'll speak into the generational issue that has always been. Uh, during our parents' time, eh, they would um, ensure their way out by getting as many children, because among them, one of them will come and support them. <laughs> All quite retirement, uh, plan. Uh, uh, retirement <laughs> plan. I mean, you are like I'm a Kali will. This one. Are you an Akani? Come on, let's go. We are to Yes, we are quite successful. So we are trying to idea that you are You know, they 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 actually. Uh, planned their retirement with their children yeah. and if you look at how the trend is going mm -hmm. because even uh, at a certain age like f 40 50 people are still struggling so how do you expect uh, probably your son or your daughter to actually come and help you out and they are also struggling within their confines I mean you must be able to now look uh, if this is going to be my retirement plan 
I must be able to have a source of income myself and not actually put my children as part of the retirement plan. Yes. Um, and there are so many avenues you can do right now. There are so many uh, pension schemes that you can actually do. You can even overly contribute from what is mandated. You can go into um, real estate uh, where you probably have a, a good um, source of income from rentals. Um, you could have uh, invested probably in stocks and those are very good actually when you, when you push them, put them for a long time yeah. they gain so much yeah, yeah. so um, like for example 10 years ago uh, the safari share is probably about four shillings and five shillings and right now probably oscillating between 50